and the Alco Truck and Haulers Regional Saloons are about to put on a big show. It's one of the biggest fields we had on the day, and you can see there's a couple of sports cars, some saloon cars, and some big, very fast V8s involved in this category too. But some great action, and it's a massive growth in terms of the Eastern Cape and what we're seeing here at East London Grand Prix Circuit and at the Aldo Scrabanti Circuit with local competitors getting involved, like Troy Murray as we go on board with him here in his sports car. Heading down towards turn number one, Potter's Pass. You can see sports cars and saloon cars in the mix here. And coming up on the back end, you can see a little bit of maneuvering from the back end of the field. Oh, there's a big Cobra involved at the front end. That's Mike Forsyth, but Sean Gladwell at this stage leads things out as they go down into Potter's Pass for the first time. A nice array of cars. Bevan Schwartz already applying pressure on driving around the outside into Cocavana. Dad will have no answer there at all. You can see just how hard he's having to work. Owen Bridger in the Honda is right up there as well. Watch out for him. He's up. Oh, there's problems. Gladwell by the looks of things with a big fire on the front end of that BMW. He pulls to the sideline and that's it. The BMW's given up the ghost. Owen Bridger now putting the pressure and trying to close down on the front end, but Bevan Schwartz in that big V8 is a tough man to beat. Keen Barnard, then you got Francois Kutso, Damien Staffen in there as well. What a start from him. The 21 car, Simon Thiessen, he's generating some great pace in that BMW of his. I think he runs a, like a Chevy V8 in that BMW. It's not quite the stock standard BMW engine. Speaking of stock standard BMW engines, there's some big pressure from a BMW now. And you can see closing down, there's a bit of an issue there. And, uh, oh, BMW squeezing out and getting through there. I think that was the big uh, Chevy, if I'm not mistaken, that they found a way past on. 103 is Keen Barnard, and you can see just how keen he is. He's under a bit of pressure there. Mid-pack battle starting to rage as well as they come in there. Look out for that. Brent Stratum having some big fun and games there with Brady Shudry and Sharnell Holmes. Gary Schultz under a bit of pressure at the back end of the field now, and it looks like there's a bit of an issue here for Schultz. He's got uh, golf on the inside of him. That's a 77 of Brent Stratum getting past. Bevan Schwartz opening up a big margin now and getting away from Owen Bridger. And you can see just how tight it is between these guys now coming down on the breakers. 71 is Francois Coutier. He's in the space frame. And that stuck garage machine looking very good as he closes down on Keen Barnard. We're on board here with Keen as he heads down the beach straight towards gate corner. He's got Owen Bridger just ahead of him and he can't manage to bridge that gap. And of course, Owen Bridger, a multiple champion in uh, the Eastern Cape. He's also a multiple saloon car champion in his own right. He's done some great work on the hill climb and an ex-supermoto rider as well. So definitely knows his way around this particular part of the circuit, that's for sure. Further back, you can see here we go. Big pressure coming there from the seven car and it is piloted at this stage, of course, by Mike Forsyth. The 15 car of Dean Ball is all over the back of him. And then, oh, there's a touch. Forsyth getting a little tap there. Dean Ball sends him sideways. He gets out of shape, rolls onto the grass and out of harm's way. But the rest of the field come flying through there. Troy Maria is one of them. And then side by side action as they start to slowly but surely make their way through. Let's have a look at this from Mike Forsyth's point of view. Expect the tap from behind, there it is. Spins out and then gives a return of the favor as he comes back at Dean Ball in that uh, TI. But BMW versus Cobra and the Cobra lost out there. Speaking of losing out, there's the Honda pulling to the sideline as well. Some problems there. And one of the golfs too, that is the 12 machine of Chernay Marais pulling to the side. And that's not what you want, that's for sure. Coming to the checkered flag though, a difficult man to beat at the circuit, particularly in this big V8 Corvette of his. It's an ex Willie Hepburn car there that Bevan Schwartz owns. And uh, it's a championship winning car in multiple saloon car categories. Here today, it's the championship winning car in this incredible regional saloon class. Great drive coming out of Bevan Schwartz, taking the win, beating out Owen Bridger, who eventually got through to second place and beat out Keen Barnard. Francois could see her in there in fourth place, beating out Damien Staff and Kaysa Thiessen and a great drive from Julian Herman. Bevan Schwartz was our winner. Let's catch up with him. Look promising because uh, on the qualifying, there was uh, three, three or four cars all in the... Uh, in the late 20s, so I thought we'll have a bit of a uh, ding dong of a das. Uh, Sean Gradwell got me on the start with that super turbo car of his quite quick. Unfortunately, he uh, put a rod to the block apparently. And then uh, the rest of the way was pretty boring, eh? I was all out there on my own, that's all I can say, unfortunately. Bit of work to be done on some of the cars, and Owen Bridger jumping in here to try and help out Julian Herman get that polo sorted out. Nice to see the amount of camaraderie amongst these drivers and uh, definitely something that uh, is uh, a big, big factor when it comes to this format of racing. And they all jump in to get the cars ready. Simon Thiessen will definitely be looking for a little bit more power in that massive V8-powered BMW of his. And Keegan Potters will definitely be looking to get back into the hunt here in this big field as they head down towards Potters Pass. Potters in Potters is always an impressive thing to see. On board with Bevan Schwartz as we head into race number two and down towards Potters Pass. Good start here, but it looks like he might have just been outgunned 
around the outside. Yes, indeed, it's the Honda of uh, uh, high-flying Owen Bridger as they head through Potters. Good start there as well. Coming out of the seven car, Mike Forsyth saw some issues with him early in race number one and spinning out that big Cobra. Hope he can get it all sorted out and make his way to the front end. Golf One's at the back fighting with BMWs. There's another big V8 starting to make his way through the field at the back end. And now onto the brakes into Cocabana. Change up for the lead. Bevan Schwartz hits the front. Francois Kutzer trying to find a way through there too and you can see some chopping and changing as Thiessen comes under pressure there from Damien Staffen and Staffen starting to put the pressure on in the Capri Kutzer putting on some pressure as well in fact he's soaking up the pressure there because Staffen is all over the back of him they're trying to find a way through King Barnard sitting in third place at the moment here comes Thiessen in the BMW and there you can see the big Capri swinging into gate corner some big ponies underneath that bonnet and the BMW of Thiessen trying to hang in there with him behind that is Tays Geyser what a start there from the golf man that Golf 1 of Tays Geyser is a very quick car indeed. It's a nice field of cars here as well. Big mix-up of sports cars and uh, saloon cars all together. But great action right the way through. Sean Heidemann having a go there with uh, Shawniel Holmes and Sean Bietzke. Good start there from the two of them. And looks at the Mayfair gearbox uh, Honda just battling with the extra power that's available from that big V8 of Bevan Schwartz. Schwartz will be a difficult man to beat today. There's no doubt about it. There you can see Herman coming through just ahead of Troy Murray. And then Troy Murray. Mike Forsyth closing in now on the 90 car. And you can see Murray now having to work double time as Forsyth in that big backdraft Cobra. We go on board with him as they come down the main straight. Absolutely everything she's got now. Forsyth has also been involved not only in this racing, but also in the Endurance Championship. And he closes right onto the tail now. Can he find a way through there on Troy Murray? Murray will definitely make that car very wide. Heading down towards... Rifle, Tays Geyser looks like he might have just got through there on Simon Thiessen or is Thiessen, yes Thiessen is behind him, confirmation of that, Geyser is absolutely hauling in that Golf 1, closing down on Staffen, behind that you've got uh, Dean Ball, Troy Murray and there comes Herman, Julian Herman in the mix too, has there been a change up yet, Forsyth looking for a way past, no not yet, can't find it at this point, Murray hanging on as they get into Cocabana. Good start here from Forsyth. He's made up uh, a lot of positions after that big spin. Remember, he started a bit further back than what he'd like to after the spin in race number one, and he's now got it all sorted out. Staffen is absolutely hauling. Trying to close down on that 71 car off Kutzer, but Kutzer's space frame just seems to have the handling advantage. Coming out of Beacon and across the line. This is a phenomenal effort once again coming out of Bevan Schwartz. And look at the gap he's pulled now. No answer from Owen Bridger. Which is trying as much as he can in that little saloon car, but the additional power that's available here in this big V8 of Schwartz is not easy to close down. There's no replacement for displacement, as they say. And V8 power usually wins out here, particularly at this circuit. And in that car, a very capable car and a very capable driver behind the wheel. Nice run here so far from Keen Barnard, looking for a chance now to possibly spoil the day. He looks like he's looking for a chance now to get ahead of Owen Bridger. Big flames at the side end of Schwartz as he comes down under braking into Cocabana. He hangs on to the lead. Bridger still in second place. Keen Barnard trying to close that gap down. As they come through there, it looks like Bridger might be slowing slightly there, so it might be a little bit of an issue there. There's definitely an issue on the second Honda. The 84 car coming through there and having some problems of his own. Richard Clark with a bit of bodywork damage on the side, maybe having a little tap there. I think Clark might have come together maybe with Brent Stratum or possibly with Cameron Hall. Coming through there is the 24 machine of Chanel Holmes and the two golf ones at it still with Sean Heidemann side by side with him. Just behind that, you've got uh, Craig Borges, and there's a problem. Oh, the Mayfield gearbox pulls to the sideline and into his motard track that he went so well at in his motard days. Bridger out of this one. Bevan Schwartz, clean and clear now. Got a massive advantage over Keen Barnard. I don't think Barnard's going to get it as the flag comes out. And you can see it's all about Bevan Schwartz. Well, you can't see it much here other than the silhouette of the East London Grand Prix circuit after a big battle at the front end initially with Owen Bridger. Good change up there right in the closing stages. Bruce Butler diving through. And is that Simon Thiessen he's got through? No, it's actually Tays Geyser. Thiessen has got through ahead and found a way past on Geyser and Butler. Problems there, I think, for Tays Geyser in the closing stages as Butler's been able to get him to the line as well. Confirmation of the results, though. Bevan Schwartz is going to take the win yet again ahead of Keen Barnard in the S2000. Then it was Francois Kutzer coming through there in the Tigra. Dana Staffen in the Ford Capri ahead of Thiessen, Butler, Tays Geyser and Julian Herman. Let's catch up with Tays Geyser and find out what the problem was on that very quick golf. Man, it was good. We had a good start. And then uh, after lap four, I started getting a brake failure. The, uh, the brakes started cooking. Uh, eventually, uh, I came, uh, I think, seventh overall. But uh, good time, fastest time, uh, 1.30.03. So that's a good time for a golf one, you know. And I'm happy with the car. Everything is fine. And then 
that's the that's the end result, you know, of the thing. But they, I enjoyed, and thanks to my sponsors, and it's my own company <laughs> who paid a pocket, and to my son Nasus, he's he did all the hard work, and I appreciate everything he did for me, and to Bevan, and to the guys at the East London Race Course, thank them very much for all the hospitality and all the help and effort. Brent Stratum will be looking to try and get into the top 10 now in the third and final heat of the Alco Trucks Regional Saloons. In remembrance of Toppy, that's always nice to see as they go and do a little bit of racing for guys that have passed on and gone to better stuff. Chase Kayser looking for better stuff now. And let's see whether or not they can all beat Bevan Schwartz or will he go three for three in the big V8. Lining up and a rolling start. The lights are out. We are racing down towards Potters. We're on board with Tate Geyser. Certainly looks like that golf has been sorted out. He closes in on Thiessen. Thiessen's on Kutzer and Staffen out front there in what looks like to be second or third place. No, third place tucked in behind Francois Kutzer and Keen Barnard. Keen Barnard now into second as they go through Potters. The rest of the pack streaming through there. Look out for the ladies in the background as well. Shanae Marie doing a super job down in probably about the top 20 at this point. Heading down towards Cocabana. On the brakes and down into Cocobana. Big move coming out of Forsyth in the Cobra. Trying to find his way through. Kayser also trying to close down and some braking and getting through there on Hammond. Julian Hammond and Kayser side by side. Oh, lovely stuff as they all get sorted out through there. The 47 car of Shudre coming through as well. Brady Shudre having a magic start. Much better coming out of that man there for a possible top 15. But up front, Bevan Schwartz hangs on. Keen Barnard in second. Kutzer fending off the attack. Coming out of Staffan and Staffan is pushing hard in the big Capri. Simon Thiessen looking to pick up the pieces there in that Thiessen's generators BMW. V8 powered generators there and V8 powered BMW as well. Oh, this is a great battle. What is this? Golf One Cup. And a problem on the sideline is one of the BMWs pulls to the side, unfortunately, and out of this one. That's not what you want. That's for sure. Up front though, Capri versus BMW. Sports car coming in. Yes, one of the radicals. And then Hammond right on his tail. Then you've got Forsyth under a bit of pressure. Geyser also taking a bit of strain now. Geyser having to fend off the attack coming through there from the 90 car of Troy Murray. And looks like Dean Ball going around the outside as well. And then all of a sudden, look at that. 77, Brent Strader. We mentioned the fact that he was going to have a better run. And Tase Geyser is definitely not having a better run. Very sick sounding GDC golf as it pulls in here. That's not what Geyser wanted. That is definitely not the way you want to be finishing a race here, particularly after a great day of racing so far out of the Golf 1 man. That pole of Hammond is very quick and it's closing in rapidly, but uh, this man is doing a super job for a top three finish and hanging in in the stud garage, Tigra. There is one and two. A little bit up the road, but not enough for that car to close in. Geyser oof, has gone now, but left the battle to Dean Ball to try and close in on the big backdraft Cobra of Mike Forsyth. We're on board with him. And look at how difficult it comes now in the very low sun in the late afternoon. Forsyth pitches it into gate corner. It becomes like sunset corner at Kailami because you can hardly see anything. And hopefully he's got a tinted visor on that helmet. There's no uh, other additional uh, screen, of course, being the open cockpit on that big backdraft Cobra. And the same thing applies here to the 90 car of Troy Murray. You can see him running sunglasses underneath that clear visor. So that's a little bit of a maneuver he's made there to try and ensure that the sun doesn't become a big factor. Heading down out to the complex, further back in the field. Good riding coming out of the 47 car. Brady Shudra, he hangs on for a potential top 10. Possibly a win in the class D's further back. There's the 114 of Borges fighting with Sean Heidemann. So uh, battles through the field and battles through the classes as well. This is good to see. So they're coming up into the closing stages now. Really nothing in between these guys. And oh, big problem at the top end here. Once again, the 709 car of Cameron Hall has yet again got it out of shape for the champion motors bmw and now putting on a show oh and he takes it man out what are you thinking there that is completely the wrong way to come back onto the circuit now dragging his front bumper along that's a big issue there and there fortunately bevan schwartz just misses out on cameron hall who made a big mistake there coming out of beacon corner tried to correct it overpowered and literally just threw it away yet again I think the front bumper is still stuck underneath the, the car. Yes, it is. As he heads down to Potters, that's going to be a massive drag force and factor into Potters. They're onto the final lap now. Keen Barnard still in second there. You can see the battle for third just in the background. And good job there from Cameron Hall, pulling off the circuit completely, realizing there's a problem and something underneath his car. Into the complex and a big problem as well for Dean Ball. He, oh, sure. That was some great driving there from Dean Ball. Using uh, some of the uh, National Polo Cup Championship experience that he had, he managed to catch that BMW TI and just keep it together. But now putting on his show as he slides out of the complex. No worries at all, though, for this man. He has had three great wins out of three great starts. Bevan Schwartz going to be taking another victory here in the Elko Trucks Border Super Saloons.
second place. In the background, you can see Keen Barnard coming through there in the Sports 2000. And Francois Kutzer going to hang on for third, just beating out Damien Staffan, who I think is just going to be beaten to the line. Yes, he is. Just in the background there, saw Simon Thiessen behind the big Ford Capri. There's results from race number three. Schwarzer ahead of Barnard, Kutzer, Staffan, Thiessen, Herman, Butler, and Mike Forsyth in the backdrop Cobra in eighth. Let's catch up now with Keen Barnard after a fantastic day's racing. It was a very good day um, from going from class B, breaking into class A, almost breaking A plus, um, having a good dance with Bevan in the last heat and I enjoyed it very much. One of our top lady contenders was Melindre Murray. Let's find out how her day went. Um, we started qualifying off pretty positive, um, qualifying third in class E. And then heat one, the car started holding back. And then finally in heat two, the motor decided it's tired. So yeah, I didn't make heat three. Class D went really well for Brady Shudre. I think we had a, a great day in class D. Uh, in the Blue City Golf, managed to keep it on track all day, finishing all three heats, which is a great positive and uh, felt very strong. It was a great day out and enjoyed it, all of it. Another good fight coming out of Shanae Murray in her golf. Uh, we started off good, but the car didn't really perform today. We battled a lot with uh, the handling and we broke a CV as well as now in the last EP we broke a diff. So it was pretty much a bad day, but we'll just get stronger after this.